2012 is where finally everything finally collapsed on the House of Cards, so to speak, for the Philadelphia Eagles, and they just had an abysmal season. They went 4-12, and finished last in the NFC East, and are now the holders of the fourth overall pick in this upcoming April's draft. And I'm sure some Eagle fans are trying to figure out what happened. What the hell happened? You know, before the 2011 season, the national media was pumping them up like they were going to be the crown their ass Super Bowl champions. Well, this is a team that struggled over the past two years with things like injuries, which exposed a lack of depth. Just because you have injuries is not an excuse for sucking. I remember the 2010 Packers had all types of players injured to in non-injured reserve, and they won the Super Bowl. That's just not a good excuse in the NFL. Uh, they struggled with injuries. I think they struggled with effort. They ended up quitting by the time the end of the year happened. And I think it was just an example of Andy Reid's time in Philadelphia had finally come up. The locker room just kind of tuned him out, which, to be fair, Andy Reid had been there 14 seasons. It's kind of easy to tune a guy out after hearing that same message for so long. Offensively, this was a team that when Vic was in there, he would have moments where he was very good, and then he would just turn over the ball too damn much. And that was part of what plagued the Eagles at times. They just turned the ball over way too damn much. They had bad play calling, poor clock management, some things that you found very evident in Andy Reid coach teams at different times throughout his 14 years. And they finished 29th in the league in points per game. So they didn't put up a lot of points on the board either. Defensively, they were even more abysmal in my opinion. They finished 30th in points allowed, 23rd versus the run, tied for 25th in sacks, 30th in interceptions, 27th in forced fumbles. They only had 13 total takeaways, which ranked them butt naked last in the NFL. So they weren't getting to the quarterback. They weren't stopping the run. Uh, they weren't creating turnovers. It's not hard to figure out why this Eagles team wasn't very good, especially since they weren't scoring a lot of points on the offensive side of the ball due to mental lapses and turnovers, poor play calling, poor clock management, game management, all of that. So it ultimately wasn't a surprise that Andy Reid um, was told he could go pursue other opportunities and they wished him well in his future endeavors, if you will, because it was time. Oh, it was time. I do have to confess it was a little bit surprising considering especially all the problems that the Eagles had on the defensive side of the football, in particular their inability to create turnovers, their inability to generate consistent pass rush, and the amount of points that they gave up. I was expecting them to go after a defensive-minded head coach, whether that be Lovey Smith or somebody like that. But instead, they decided after 14 years of an offensive guy, they wanted another offensive guy, but they were going to go to the college ranks to find him. And after a little bit of hedging, Chip Kelly finally accepted the gig, and he is now the new head man in Philadelphia. What does Chip Kelly bring with him? A pedigree from his college days of being a guy that is very up-tempo on offense, believes in spreading out opposing defenses. Uh, will everything that he ran in Oregon necessarily translate into the NFL? No, and I think Chip Kelly has even acknowledged the fact that he might incorporate certain elements from what he did at Oregon, but what he did at Oregon won't fully be what you see there in Philadelphia. This is a team that going into this offseason has a lot of questions. It seems like Michael Vick would be, in theory, on the way out, even though you could potentially argue that he might be a good fit for whatever version of Chip Kelly's offense Chip Kelly is going to decide to do with his ability to throw and run. But you know, Vick wasn't very good this past year, even when he did play, so it might be best to just move on from the whole experience. Uh, DRC, Dominic rogers Cromartie, or as you often hear, doesn't really care. Boy, he sure played like he doesn't really care in 2012. He's a free agent, and I would be very surprised and stunned, quite frankly, if the Philadelphia Eagles did bring him back. You would assume Namdi Asamoah will be cut because he was just god-awful terrible this past year. Just god-awful terrible. No longer one of the best shutdown cover corners in the NFL. Uh, another interesting kind of subplot going into this offseason, will the Philadelphia Eagles attempt to maybe acquire somebody like an Alex Smith who's a dual-threat type of quarterback. Not a great quarterback, mind you, but might be a good guy for them to be able to get by, or are they going to give Nick Foles a chance in 2013 to establish that he is their future at the position? Now, you want to understand maybe why the Philadelphia Eagles really took a dive the past two seasons, in particular in 2012. 
you can look in part at what they've done over the past five years again in what, ladies and gentlemen? The NFL Draft. As far as the Eagles draft history, it's kind of checkered over the past five years. And what I mean is you found some impact players like Deshaun Jackson in the second round of 2008, even though he has his own set of baggage that he brings to the table. The 2009 draft was particularly good in the first two rounds when they took Jeremy Macklin and LaShawn McCoy with their first two picks. Uh, so you've had instances where they've been able to find some impact players, and particularly on the offensive side of the football. But they've also had several busts like Brandon Graham and... Teo Nisham and Trevor Laws, and they've really had a refusal over the past several years, as was evident throughout Andy Reid's tenure, to address glaring needs like the linebacking core in the first round, to the point where it was very baffling and it was hard for me to really understand. Again, an organization that under Andy Reid's tenure spent so many picks on offensive linemen and defensive linemen. You might say, well, the games are won and lost in the trenches. Yeah, but the problem is when you have so much so much infusion of new talent into one set of positions, or in this case just two set of positions, and you neglect all these other parts of the football team, eventually, even if every single defensive lineman you draft worked it out and every single offensive lineman you draft worked it worked out, you would have still all of these glaring holes. So you might be great in the trenches and be shitty everywhere else. And it's also troubling, too, with the Eagles that over the past two years, they really decided that you know they thought their time was now and they were going to go out there and trade for Asamoah and trade for DRC and you know bring in guys like Jason Babin. And they spent a lot of money. And it was to the point where it was too much and they forgot things like building through the draft and they forgot things like uh, the importance of chemistry and the ability of everybody on offensive defense to be able to fit and mesh together. And I will say this, their last draft class in 2012 I think has a chance to be very, very good. Fletcher Cox I think is a stud. Uh, Michael Kendricks I thought played pretty well. Nick Foles, you know, may or may not be their answer at quarterback. Brandon Boykin in the fourth round. He's a very good defensive back. Uh, so when you look at this Eagles team, you can't really say the cupboard is fully bare in terms of talent. You still got Jackson and Macklin and McCoy on offense. So Chip Kelly, this was a somewhat appealing job for him. You know, but even when you talk about, again, even when they make a pick that's somewhat decent, like Danny Watkins in the first round in 2011, he was, what, a guard that was 26, 27 years old when, you dra when they drafted him? Ooh. Oh. I mean, I would say this, is that with Chip Kelly coming in with, assumably, a new offensive philosophy and looking on the offensive side of the football and saying that their cupboard isn't fully bare, except on the offensive line, which their offensive line is complete trash, um, that, you know, with the strength of that 2012 draft class, if you have another good draft class in 2013, you might be looking at a team that gets a lot better in 2013 and maybe contends for the division title in 2014. Uh, but again, there's been too much emphasis on free agency and trade to try and improve this team over the past couple of years. And that's what they really need to truly get away from. As far as what I envision uh, the Eagles draft philosophy will be in April, I think everybody assumes that the number one most glaring need is offensive line. And the reason being is because it is. That line was brutal. They were putrid, especially once Jason Peters, once he went out with an injury, you know, they just didn't have very much. King Dunlap is terrible. Da, 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 da. I mean, the bottom line is, is this is a team that you know needs to reinforce itself. Still, after all the picks they've spent over the years on offensive linemen, they still have glaring needs on the offensive line, which will lead you to think they might take Jokel, the te Texas A&M offensive tackle, if he's still on the board. You never know. Watch out for a guy like Eric Fisher out of Central Michigan. He's the type of guy with... Uh, guys like Lewin from Michigan going back to school, you know, a guy like Fisher could really rise up the draft boards. Or if Chip Kelly really decides that a Geno Smith, let's say, is on the board and he really likes him and really thinks that Geno Smith's going to be a better fit for what he wants to do with the offensive side of the football than, let's say, Nick Foles, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for Philadelphia to take a guy like Geno Smith, number four, if he was even there. As far as the second round, I think... Uh, this would be an example of trying to improve the weaponry on the offensive side of the football 
And you might look at guys like Robert Woods or if he was there, a Tavon Austin being guys that would be possibilities, guys that could work out of the slot. Um, and provide another weapon in the passing game would seem to be something that Chip Kelly would really want to do. Now, you might say if you're an Eagles fan, but their defense was terrible. Why would you focus so much on the offensive side of the ball when their defense is terrible? Their defense is terrible. And I don't think one draft alone is going to fix it, quite frankly. But when you look at it, you've got Chip Kelly coming in. You've got a new coach, a new philosophy and he knows offense more than he does defense. As a result, you would tend to want to believe and think that he would devote at least a good portion of his first draft to addressing that side of the football and then worrying about the defensive side of the ball maybe in the third, fourth, fifth rounds perhaps. Um, if you're an Eagles fan, I know the last couple of years have been frustrating. I'm sure they are. Um, and I'm sure you're wondering whether or not Chip Kelly is ultimately going to be the guy. I think Chip Kelly is going to be an example of a college coach that either A, within three years has his team contending for a world title, or B, will be leaving the NFL within three years to go back to a college game. It's one of the two. I don't think there's going to be any middle room with Chip Kelly. I really don't. There's a lot to like. There's a lot of uh, potential upside to this hiring, and there could potentially be a lot of downside. We're going to find out what happens in, starting in this offseason and beyond, I guess.